Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 91 of Rapid Fade Online, and this one's titled Change of Masters. This chapter opens at your bestie's house. Uh, bestie, why do we need four packets of these chips? You asked as you followed her into her room. Two packets is fine. No, because I'm going to eat myself stupid, she replied, throwing the packets of food on the bed, then jumping onto the bed herself. Uh, you don't need food to get there. You're already... You paused, allowing her to finish the sentence in her head. Oh, excuse me, she replied sassily. Get over here and hop up on the bed before I change my mind and kick you out. You wouldn't do that because you love me, he replied, walking over and crawling onto her bed as well, making it quick just in case she wasn't missing when she said she was going to kick you out. As you lay there, you started chatting about school, memories together, and RFO. I don't know, I just kind of want to ditch this mission because the guy who has slave contracted us is a giant dick with an ego to match and he honestly thinks he owns us, but Tamaki put him in his place. Tamaki can get kind of dumb when he's feeling it, eh? She commented, half asking, half just making an observation. Oh, definitely, he replied. He's more confident in game, but I've seen his dom side in real life too, so I know it's there. Why do I get the feeling you're talking about sexual dom? She asked cheekily. Uh, because I am, you chuckled. But a lady never tells her secrets. You're not a lady, shut up, she teased. Yeah, true, he sighed. I'm a bro at heart. So, asshole ego is going to get you to the next steps in? Your bestie asked. I have no idea. We're supposed to be finding out who's at the top of this organisation, then taking them out, but I don't see how we're going to be able to do that. Mmm, she hummed, munching on another chip. I don't know. I mean, once we find the head honcho, I don't know what we're going to do either, so I guess it's kind of a good thing that we're moving slowly, but I'm not wanting to go in-game as much with this idiot supposedly looking after us. You rolled your eyes. Get Mirio in there and tell him where you're at. He'll sort the guy out, your bestie replied before putting another chip in her mouth. He'd do a great job, you replied. He would, she said, letting silence hang in the air for a second. You ate some more chips and she rolled onto her back and stared up at the ceiling. I need to text him, she suddenly said, sitting up. What? Why? When? You asked with surprise. I need to tell him I still love him, she said, grabbing for her phone. Wait, are you sure? What about the long distance thing? You asked. She paused and groaned, letting her arm flop to the bed, still holding her phone. Is this where I have to stop and remind you about your situation? You asked her. She groaned again. Is it going to work? Because if it's not, then don't do this to him or yourself, you replied in a stern voice. She groaned again, still not looking at you. Give me your phone, you demanded. This is an intervention. I still love him, she wailed. You knew she meant it, but she was also being a little silly with it, and you reached out and grabbed her phone, wrestling it from her hand. No, she cried. Yes, you matched her. But he's just so perfect and happy and strong and... She let out a loud moan that you couldn't tell if it was a sexual moan or one coming from a place of being distraught, so you tossed her phone away and grabbed her in a hug instead. I know, he said, patting her head. And I just want him to hold me, she continued. But I'm holding you, he replied, low-key offended. Pull me down, I want Mirio, she snapped playfully. Too bad, you have me now, he replied. Get off me! I don't want you, she replied back with a smirk. Ah, uh, excuse me, you'll accept my hug, thank you very much, you said with a playfully appalled look on your face. I'm now Mirio. Knock knock, bitch, I have a joke for you. Who's there, mother trucker? she asked. Broken pencil. Broken pencil who? Never mind, it's pointless, you said, leering when you got to the punchline. Oh my god, she groaned. He would totally tell that as a knock-knock joke. Right? You laughed. You're going to miss those. As weird as it sounds, I'm going to miss his strange sense of humour, she replied. Who knows? You might find someone else like Mirio, or Mirio himself, when and if you come back after going overseas. We'll see, she sighed, finally hugging you back. Back in game, Tamajiki stood back, eyeing the burly man while his master still held the gun in a threatening manner. Has this happened before? The burly guy asked Master as he looked Tamajiki up and down. Only once, Master growled. 
which I won as well, so it's not an issue, he lied. Tamajiki let it slide, giving the burly guy a stern look as he started approaching. How much will you give me for him? The burly guy asked Master, his eyes on Tamajiki. Well, Master replied, putting the gun down. He is worth a lot because of his stamina. The burly guy nodded. You want to come with me? He asked Tamajiki. I can train you. You have good fundamentals. It looks like you possibly have martial arts knowledge in real life. Tamajiki stayed silent. He couldn't afford to ruin this now. This was his out. You can have him, Master suddenly said, and I'll keep the girl. Tamajiki's eyes flicked to Master and he scowled a little. I definitely can't leave Yin alone with this guy, but I can't pass up the opportunity to get closer to my goal. Is there another one? The burly man asked Master. Yes, but she's hopeless, he said, sneering at Tamajiki. I'll go with this new person and then go back in game as Butterfly and rescue Yin, Tamajiki thought. Happy with this, he just waited for the men to talk it out. A bit of haggling happened and finally he was relieved of his contract to Master and was slave contracted to this burly member of BB. I wonder if he's connected with anyone higher up, he wondered as he watched the new emblem burn into his arm again. And there ends chapter 91. Stay tuned for chapter 92.